This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, this is going to be uh, a fairly troubling story. After China's parents divorced, uh, when she's, I guess, four years old, she had three different stepfathers, one stepmother, and according to her, her stepfather, her first stepfather, rather, threatened suicide at one point. Her biological father, who once accidentally stabbed her mother in the thigh, had a problem with alcoholism, and she wrote in her book that there were times he would be so drunk that he would bring a woman home, forgetting he was already married. Oh, my God. That's an excuse. Never- I forgot, honey. I didn't remember. Oh, God. Damn. Hey, that's getting in the bottle, brother. I tell you. From 73 to 83, her siblings and her mother moved several times. She basically grew up home to home and never really had a true father figure in her life. And she wrote in her book that she wasn't like normal kids. She was big. She was different. And she learned how to play the the violin and the cello. I don't think I would have ever pegged her as, as, as being musically inclined. Did you know she could play these instruments? Well, I found out as we went along. Yeah, she was very talented. Joni had a lot of skills. Unfortunately, the skill of maintaining self-esteem was not one of them. Unfortunately, uh, seventh grade is when she uh, starts to have some trouble at school. She's kissed by a teacher who worked at the school and around this same time, she starts purging after she ate. We're off to a rough start here for a childhood, Jim. How much of this did you come to know before the book was published? Well, a lot of it because she, she was, uh, willing to talk about it more often than not, but you never knew how deep she was digging into her, uh, her treasure chest of emotions. Uh, but you knew that she had a lot of issues. I, I, I don't know this to be factual, but just by based on the conversations that she and I had, and there were many, many, uh, I think she could have been a suspect for, a, uh, for abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse. Uh, like she said, she was bigger than her peers. She, you know, she had a, she had a, she was, she was, she wasn't a dainty little sweet little, you know, little girly girl. And I think she missed that. I think she got some of that back when she had her surgery, but I just believe that her childhood was so troubling and that led to her trusting very few people and always having the great self doubt that she wasn't even maybe they're not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not whatever enough. So it was, she was a, she had a lot of issues that she had to travel with every day and live with her entire life. There's a more, more trouble to come. Uh, Eventually her, uh, her friends start smoking marijuana. Some of her mother's friends find out they tell her mom, and now her mom thinks she needs to go to rehab for smoking marijuana. So she God. moves out of her mother's house, goes to live with friends, eventually winds up with her biological father. Uh, she starts working out and focusing all of her, I guess, nervous energy and anxiety on physical development. Eventually she becomes so strong, uh, at least in her abdominal muscles, she would write that she didn't know that she had an ovarian tumor. And eventually she has surgery to fix that, but says it was a very difficult surgery. And she actually finished her last year of high school in Spain. And uh, she wrote in her book as a graduation gift, her father took out a $40,000 student loan in her name. So now she's saddled with debt. (laughs) She wrote, imagine your worst childhood experiences. Some of you I'm sure can top me. No sweat. Everybody has a sad tale for me. It's not how bad or how awful those experiences were that makes it hard to talk about them. It's the very idea of those experiences receiving any credit for the good fortune I have at the moment. It's the acknowledgement that hurts. So be it. That's one of the good things about wrestling. You learn how to take a hard fall. This is a, uh, this is a pretty rough upbringing here, man. And uh, you know, I, I don't want to say that this is going to define her life because she's going to achieve a lot of great success, but it, it starts pretty, pretty sad. And, and it ends pretty sad as well, Jim. Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, she accomplished a lot of things, obviously we'll talk about those and they were significant. 
Uh, she was a big part of the Attitude Era, without a doubt. Uh, she made a lot of money. I'm sure. I'm not sure of this, but <clears throat> I would be willing to bet a case of barbecue sauce on this statement. She was the, probably the first woman wrestler to make seven figures. In other words, make a million dollars or more. Right. And I know that to be fact because I I was in charge of doing that the payroll. Uh, so she she got paid real well for being booked with Triple H, who was getting paid real well for being a main event guy, and and so evolving his game. She she did accomplish so much, but she never accomplished finding true happiness, and that's the sad part of this whole story. Let's, uh, let's keep the story going for China. She attends the University of Tampa, graduates in 92 with a major in Spanish literature. During co college, she's also going to study French and German, so she could converse in three or four different languages here. But it's while she's in college that she has yet another uh, really, really tough circumstance. She winds up revealing in her book that she was actually uh, raped by two men at a drunken college party. The hits, this is just an unbelievable amount of stuff to overcome here, Jim. And she's still going to become one of the biggest stars in this genre. And as you said, be the first female to eclipse seven figures with, with, with a start like this, you wouldn't be surprised to hear that, you know, the, the hits just keep on coming and this bad luck just seems to follow them around like a cloud, but China, she broke through all that, man. It, it really is a success story. Oh yeah. There's a lot of success in her story, but you know, we're, we're, we're all going to be mostly remembered for how we spent or how we've affected people in our last days. Uh, if you know, when your last days are coming, many don't, uh, but in, in today's world being diagnosed with all these issues, dealing with rape, dealing with abuse, dealing with three fathers, three stepfathers are really, it's like saying I got. I got three starting pit. I got three, th three quarterbacks in my team. What you're saying really is you have none. She had three fathers, but she really had none. It, at least that's how she viewed it a, right. lot, a lot of the times. So, but if, if this would happen in today's world, there's all kinds of, and luckily, and, and, and I say this in a great, good way, that there's all kinds of ways to get treatment, to get help, to talk through these things, to evaluate where you are because she never could find close that circle on complete, uh, self-esteem. She never, again, I said again, and I'll say it again before we go off the air. She never thought she was good enough or pretty enough or, you know, her body or whatever. And then, you know, the thing on her, uh, the jaw thing, get her jaw realigned was huge for her. I mean, it was very, very important for this to happen. <clears throat> and quite frankly, uh, it, it did upgrade her look mm -hmm. immensely Look at before and after shots. And she got as a heel she, before the surgery, she got ridiculed. Some real cold things fans were saying and doing throwing, you know, a little, little, all these insults that were heart heartfelt. They weren't in the role of being a heel wrestler or a villain cast in a fixed fictional deal. People were getting real personal with it. And I think because, because, because she was a sensitive person, she took all that shit to heart, unfortunately. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.